With the recent shooting that just happened in Florida in the yoga studio, while I researched it, I came across many things in reference to Christian yoga. I've also had a few people come to me with questions about yoga and if it is okay for believers in Yahshua to partake in it. The question is always, should Christians do yoga? There's a growing consensus today that yoga is alright for Christians. Christians are believers who are saved through the faith in Yahshua. However, I do not call myself a Christian because this is a label the world has placed on us when they decided to persecute and kill us. So I am a Christian according to the way the world would label me, but I prefer to use the Hebrew term quote shim, meaning set apart ones. We are set apart from the world being led by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. But I will use the label of Christian in the video to make it easier for those who do not have this full understanding to follow. So like I was saying, there is a growing consensus today that it is alright for Christians to engage in the practice of yoga, even if it is just for exercise. There is even a movement going around named Christian Yoga or Yoga for Christians. There are churches that embrace it and even provide yoga classes for their congregation. Many feel it's okay because they play gospel music or scriptures with their exercise, so it takes away from the other notions that come with yoga. But like with many things, the problem starts with a general lack of education on the subject. People just see the word yoga, then they link it with exercise, and from that general way of thinking, there is no further analysis or thought on what yoga actually is and where it came from. It again is the same problem that we face with most things. We are highly uneducated on most of the things that we do and partake in. The thing is, if ignorance was a valid excuse on our day of judgment, then I would not be making this video. And there are also a lot of people that like to say that the grace that Elohim has given us shouldn't make us think about these type of things. Basically, because we are saved because of our belief in Yahshua, that we shouldn't have to worry about trivial things like yoga. This is also a false understanding. Grace does not allow us to play with wickedness. This is why we are quote shim. We are set apart. Now before we get into what yoga is, let's get into scripture. Yoga is obviously not discussed in scripture. But what is spoken of is plenty of instruction we are given for living our lives. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 3, we see the first commandment, You shall have no other gods before me. When Yahshua overcame Satan in the wilderness, he said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 10, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahweh your Elohim, and him only you shall serve. I show these first scriptures because it will soon be proven to you that when practicing yoga, you are putting other gods before Yahweh. Scripture has also prophesied that this kind of thing will be a problem during the last days. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So what I will explain is why this correlates with other gods and spirits and doctrines of demons. Like I said, with many traditions that we practice today, the answer becomes much clearer if we just educate ourselves on the background and history of things. So let's take a look at what yoga is. First thing to know about yoga is that it comes from Hinduism. Hinduism is an Eastern religion rooted in the occult, centered on themes of self-realization and actualization. There is a saying, there is no yoga without Hinduism and no Hinduism without yoga. Yoga is an Eastern occult practice rooted in paganism. Hindus believe in many gods, like Krishna, Kali, and Shiva, to name a few. There are six major schools of thought, or darshanas, in Hinduism. Forgive my pronunciation. Samkhya, Yoga, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Mimasa, and Vedanta. Yoga is used as a practice to control the senses and ultimately the mind. Hindus believe that there is a coiled serpent asleep in each person, awaiting to be awakened. This serpent, Kundalini, is called wisdom, knowledge, or power. If you watch my History of Religion series, you know that the belief in many different gods is known as polytheism and or paganism. It also works its way back to Satan. All Eastern religions point back to Satan. All of them. That should be enough for anyone to know that they should stay away from it, especially one who says they are a believer in salvation only through Yahshua HaMashiach. Today, most Americans largely misunderstand yoga. The main form that is done in practice is known as asana, or physical posture. 
Asana practice alone is known to have many health benefits from lowering blood pressure, relief of back pain and arthritis, and boosting the immune system. It is very good for flexibility and many have lost a lot of weight doing yoga. Though these are positives, they are not the actual goals of yoga. According to HinduWebsite.com, it says that yoga is the most important contribution of Hinduism to the modern world. They say the practice of yoga is a sure way to hasten the process of our evolution into higher beings of the transcendental realms. I find it crazy that people believe this stuff, but they want to disrespect Yahshua and not believe him. <laughs> the website also says that yoga is used to suggest the union of the individual self, Atman, with the highest self, Brahman. Yoga is the means to integrate the body with the mind and the lower self with the higher self. Through yoga, one can achieve perfection of the physical, mental, and lower selves and prepare one's journey into higher consciousness through the awakening of the Kundalini and other latent powers. This is all about the Eastern religion of Hinduism and calling upon the different spirits in order for people to achieve a higher self. This is a part of New Age teaching as well that draws a lot of their philosophies and reasonings from Eastern religions like Hinduism and Buddhism. Well-known yoga teacher BKS Iyengar is quoted as saying this about asanas. Asanas are not meant for physical fitness, but for conquering the elements, energy, and so on. So how to balance the energy in the body, how to control the five elements, how to balance the various aspects of the mind without mixing them all together, and how to be able to perceive the difference between the gunas and to experience that there is something behind them, operating in the world of man. That is what asanas are for. The process is slow and painstaking, but a steady inquiry facilitates a growing awareness. And also, and forgive me for the pronunciation of this name, Sri K. Patabi Joyce, another well-known yoga teacher from the 20th century, said this about yoga. But using it, yoga, for physical practice is no good, of no use, just a lot of sweating, pushing, and heavy breathing for nothing. The spiritual aspect, which is beyond the physical, is the purpose of yoga. When the nervous system is purified, when your mind rests in the Atman, the self, then you can experience the true greatness of yoga. These two quotes from well-known yoga teachers show that yoga is not primarily intended for the exercise use which most Christians today use it for. There are other purposes besides the very general usage that most people place their reasoning behind. What people are not bringing into their awareness is that yoga is used for spirituality. The goal of it is bringing the mind into togetherness with the universe, becoming self-aware. This is what yoga really is. Even if you're just doing it with sincere hope for physical exercise, it will not be the only thing you get from it. Even if you're unaware of it, it was created with the intention for spirituality. As a Christian, the only spirit you want to connect with is the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Spirituality in any other way is a form of New Age teaching, which is a way of calling upon spirits and demons. Again, according to HinduWebsite.com, modern yoga practice often includes traditional elements inherited from Hinduism, such as moral and ethical principles, postures designed to keep the body fit, spiritual philosophy, instruction by a guru, chanting of mantras, sacred syllables, quieting the breath, and stilling the mind through meditation. In Hinduism, there is an underlying belief that the true nature of self revealed through the practice of yoga is of the same nature as God. This clearly goes against any believer's belief in Elohim. We are not gods. We do not have his nature. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, anything that we are participating in that has a belief that our true nature is the same as Elohim places us as equals with him, and it is something a believer should always avoid. And we also should not be meditating. When we meditate, it is used to clear our mind. But what is unknown to us is that the practice of meditation is also a practice used of channeling spirits. The scriptures have never instructed us to clear our mind. It only has instructed us to meditate on the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5 say, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Elohim, 
for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Messiah. We are to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of the Messiah, not clear our minds so that other things can come in. Now those that are doing yoga for Christians and Christian yoga really don't understand that they are practicing Hinduism. Nothing about yoga is innocent. Even the yoga positions are specifically made to worship other gods. The yoga postures are offering to the gods. It's believed that if you do these postures and do the breathing techniques along with the meditation, then you will be accepted by a god. There are many different gods in Hinduism, but like I said earlier, these gods are not the same god as our one true Elohim, the Elohim of Israel. It is important to note that all postures and poses are all in reference to a false deity. They all have meanings in reference to occultism. They are all rooted in the culture of Satan. They have sun salutations and moon salutations. If you understand anything about paganism, you will know that in the ancient days, the pagans worshiped the sun and the moon. There was the sun god and moon goddess. The sun salutation pays homage and worship to the sun, even if the one doing the pose is unaware of it. All of these poses are sun salutations. Again, people who are doing these poses are saluting the sun, something a Christian should never do. These poses are moon salutations. When performing these poses, they are saluting the moon. Please remember that the sun god and moon goddess are all representations of Lucifer. When you are doing these poses, you are paying homage to Lucifer. So there obviously is no Christian way of doing yoga. Now, not only should we understand that it's wrong to do poses with our body that salute Satan, but we should also understand the dangers of spirituality. It should be known that in this highly spiritually wicked world, when we do things that have roots in the occult, we give demons and spirits access points and open doorways for them to enter in. When we engage in occult practices, we allow demons and spirits to enter into doorways that we should not have opened. For a Christian, you allow the power of the Holy Spirit to be blocked in your life and are allowing the power of demons and spirits to be manifested. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of Elohim and that the spirit of Elohim dwells in you? Understand, people, we are his people, and we should not defile our temple with the things that are not made for him. Yoga is not a harmless activity. We just need to know the truth about these traditions and practices we were encouraged to blindly accept. If you are a Christian and you have engaged in yoga, please stop and pray about it. Remember, there is no yoga without Hinduism and no Hinduism without yoga. You cannot be a believer in salvation through Yahshua and practice Hinduism. They are completely against each other. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 and 9 say, Yahshua HaMashiach is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away with various and strange doctrines. We cannot make the wicked things of this world holy. If it was made and designed for Satan, it will always be for Satan. The only things that has happened is that the devil's ways have been marketed and promoted to us as harmless and beneficial, so much so that we do not see the devil in it. Think about it. There are poses that are literally made to salute the sun. Why would the father want us engaging in activities that are created to salute the sun? He has never told us to do things like this. One of the biggest mistakes people make is just writing things off as harmless and inconsequential, believing that things aren't that big of a deal, and just as long as they believe in Yahshua, they can do what they want and be saved. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Yoga is a form of practicing Hinduism. Remember that Sri K. Patabi Joyce said that the spiritual aspect, which is beyond the physical, is the purpose of yoga. All the devil did is find a way to promote his form of spiritual activity and disguise it as harmless exercise. There is no Christian yoga. Those positions you are doing are used to worship Satan. Just place this in the same box that all the other pieces of deception of this world are placed in. It's just something else that you now know better. The list doesn't stop here, but as things continue to get exposed, you begin to see a constant theme, which is that we must know what we do and accept in this world. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says that Satan deceives the whole world. So if we don't begin to question all the things that we do and accept, we make ourselves more vulnerable to traps that we could clearly be able to see if we had more understanding. If you are deceived by this, pray about it. This may be a wake-up call for you. When you pray, ask the Father for more discernment on the matter 
and like always, repent and ask him for forgiveness. Ask him to close the doorway that you may have opened through the yoga. He will fix it. Teach others from your experience and help others break from this bondage. If you are one that promotes yoga for Christians and Christian yoga, please don't harden your heart to this because you want to reject the truth. Research the connection of yoga and Hinduism yourself. It will become quite clear to you. It's time to put away all things that brings us away from the Father. Yoga is definitely one of them. Please pray about it and help others that lack understanding as well. Time's almost up. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure you like and share this. If you have not already done so, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. I hope this helped you. I love you all.